The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Ernie's Day, starring Charlie Ruggles and the music of Meredith Wilson. Barry Fitzgerald is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening, this is Barry Fitzgerald. Family Theatre is just about my favourite programme, which is why I'm very glad I'm your host this evening. And I'm hoping this is one of your favourite programmes, because Family Theatre is dedicated to your family, you know. Dedicated in the belief that a happy family means a happy community. Happy communities make happy nations. And happy nations mean a happy, peaceful world. Well, now, that's a very simple thought, but maybe we all ought to think about it a little more. And we might be thinking about something else, a conviction which so many of us share with each other, the conviction that one big step towards keeping our families together and happy is prayer, family prayer. A family that prays together stays together. Well, I've done not enough talking. Suppose I listen along with you to tonight's story, Ernie's Day, written by Bud Lesser and starring Charlie Ruggles. <laughs> It was more than 25 years ago, shortly after the First World War, when young Ernie first came to Stonewalk and headed for the amusement park on the edge of the little New England town. Good evening. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Is, is this where Mr. Gary, the owner of this amusement park, lives? Why, Mr. Gary passed away a little over two years ago. I'm Mrs. Gary. I run the park now. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I was wondering if there'd be any objections if I pitched my hot dog stand somewhere on the grounds here. It's, it's a right smart little outfit, and I make first-class hot dogs, good coffee, too. Oh, that red and white wagon over there yours? Yeah, yes, ma'am. The trailer in the back comes off. That's my living quarters. Oh? Uh -huh. If you'd agree to let me settle down here, I thought maybe I'd sell that and maybe find me a room. Just a room? Are you all alone? No wife or children? No, ma'am, no, no. But I'm steady and sober, oh, and I make the best... that's too bad. I... I sort of like kids. Uh, but you let me stay anyway, won't you? I might well, be able to sort of help around the place in the mornings before the crowd begins coming. Well, the stands here are concessions. Would you want to pay a regular rent or come in on a percentage deal? Well, either way, ma'am. You can bet I'll get the customers <laughs> coming. I make percentage, the best... Percentage, then. Mm. But you'll have to quit calling me ma'am. My name's Elizabeth. Well, I'm not very used to dealing with ladies. <laughs> I, I've been following the Carnies ever since I was a kid. Oh, the outskirts of Stanwalk will be pretty tame after the carnivals. And uh, what, what makes you think you want to settle down? Uh, my pa followed the shows as long as he lived, and he always figured neither my ma nor he ever had much of a life. Mm. And he told me I should settle down and have a house and a wife and kids if I ever got the chance. And... <laughs> I'm going to make the chance. Mm-hmm. You... you have a girl, then? Well, first I gotta have the house. A little place, maybe, but one that I own free and clear, and then I gotta have a thousand dollars in the bank. That's the way Pa had it all figured out, and I think he was right. Mm -hmm. Of course, he... Oh, <laughs> my goodness, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Would there be a room not too far from the park, maybe? Well, you could use that little cabin near the entrance. Might be sort of nice to have a man around to look after things. Good morning, Ernie. Morning. My, your wagon looks nice. And in the few months you've been here, you've made that little cabin look like a new place, too. Oh, well, thanks, thanks. Cup of coffee, Lizzie? Oh, yes, thank you. You do make wonderful coffee. But the name's Elizabeth and not Lizzie. Ah, well, I sort of like Lizzie better. <laughs> but I might settle for Liz. Well, now, what's wrong with Elizabeth? Well, I don't know. It sounds sort of... Well, I just don't <laughs> know the word, but I... I don't make people call me Ernest. I'm Ernie to everybody. Well, Elizabeth is kind of formal. Uh, how about uh, Beth, Ernie? Uh, well, I don't know. 
<laughs> See you after we close tonight. Uh, did you bake a chocolate cake this morning? Yes. I just finished frosting it before I came over. Yeah, I'll see you later then. <laughs> chocolate cake is my chief attraction. Oh, well, there are other <laughs> things about you, too. Ernie, you can use that lumber back of the roller coaster to board up your wagon. Yeah, board up my wagon? Are you crazy, Liz? Beth. Yeah, but what's this talk about boarding things up? I'm going to keep open all year. Oh, tomorrow's Labor Day, Ernie. Won't be much business to speak of after that. There won't be much... Oh, well, then I... I guess I'll have to be moving along, huh? Oh? I have a long way to go before I have that house and that thousand dollars, you know. Then... Then it will be goodbye after tomorrow, Ernie? Well, not unless you want it that way, Liz. Uh, uh Beth. <laughs> I figured to move into Stanwalk, find a place that's busy all year round. With a little luck, I can get the house and the thousand dollars in pretty short time. And then you'll have to find the girl. Uh, well, I've, I've already found the girl. If she'll have me, Beth. <sighs> she'll have you, Ernie. Like I said, the real center of the town is this municipal auditorium. This is where they hold their political rallies and the meetings, concerts and lectures, too. Yeah, but on days when there are no meetings. Uh, you see that building over there? Uh-huh, that's the city hall, isn't it, Officer Murphy? Uh, uh, that it is, but call me Murph. That's what everyone calls me. I've been on this beat for eight years. Ah, uh, Mur Murph it is, yeah, and I'm Ernie. Uh, well, well, now, Ernie, uh, that building on the corner is the First National Bank. Building. I see. Now, now the, the other corner is the, the Labor Temple, uh -huh. and the post office is just down from that. Oh, my, my. Say, this would be the ideal spot for my stand, right here. Right here in the corner of the parking lot. Now, now, now don't be asking my permission, for I couldn't give it. But uh, if you were to open up... Uh, well, I wouldn't be likely to notice the wagon for a few days. <laughs> yeah, I get you. <laughs> That's mighty nice, Murph. Oh, well, there's not a good cup of coffee in the neighborhood, and my lieutenant's a pushover for good java. Good morning, Ernie. Morning, Murph. Two coffees? Uh, right. Uh, I want you to meet Mr. Kingsley, Ernie. Uh, he's the mayor of Stanwood. Well, I'm happy... The mayor? Oh, well... Well, good good morning, uh, Your Grace. Uh, I believe the form of respect usually employed in political parlance is Your Honor, not Your Grace. But, however, I didn't come here to discuss my titles. I just came for a cup of that famous coffee. Why, sure. Yes, sir. Right here, Your Honor. Uh, uh, sugar? Yeah, thanks. Cream? Yeah, thank you. I was afraid you came about the license. I've, I've put in an application. Oh, you know. I never talked business until I've had my coffee. Mmm. Yes, it is. You know, the chief said this was the best coffee in town. Yeah, how would you like a hot dog? I make the no, best hot... No, no, no. It's a little early in the day for frankfurters. I could do with another cup of... Oh, thanks. Uh, by the way, Ernie, uh, you can stop over and see the clerk later today. Your license will be ready. <laughs> May I have a do hot dog, please, mister? Why, sir? Why, Liz? <laughs> you sound glad to see me. Oh, my, of course I'm glad to see you. Why, you haven't been in more than three times all summer. Well, we've been busy out at the park, Ernie, and you haven't been out once since early spring. I don't know why I bother with you. Uh, you've been very patient with me, Beth. <laughs> yeah, uh, you see? <laughs> ah, yeah, I remembered that time, didn't I? <laughs> uh, Beth, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, I found it. The house. <gasps> And I made a down payment to the bank. Oh, where is it? On Marlborough Boulevard. Oh, sounds very swanky. No, 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 it isn't swanky, but it's quite nice. The yard is pretty well overgrown, but with a little care... Oh, never I... mind the yard. How about the inside? When can I see it? Can we go tonight? Will you close early for once? No, 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 I, I can't tonight. No? no? There's a big meeting going on. Something about uh, modifying the Volstead Act in order to curb gangsterism and bootlegging. Oh, honestly, Ernie, you've become so interested in world affairs that you hardly have time Well, now, even... I'll try to get out to the park Sunday, Liz. If I don't work hard, you know, I'll never get that house paid for and a thousand dollars in the bank. Ernie, I have a little money saved up. And what's mine's yours. Why, Liz, what kind of a way is that to start out? But if we were married, I, I could bake pies and cakes, and that way the stand would make more money no, than it's ever no, made. No, 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 that's no good. People come to Ernie's for hot dogs and coffee. I'm a specialist. <laughs> Honestly, Ernie. You listen to every crazy speech maker who comes in here for a cup of coffee, and when I suggest Well, sure, something... sure, I listen to everyone. The world is changing, honey. And you know most of the changes are discussed right next door in that auditorium? If a fellow wants to learn, he has to listen to both sides. <laughs> sure, you have an open mind to everyone but me. Well, all right, all right. Come on, Sammy. Now, what is it? What is uh... it? 
Nothing, really. Well, all I know is you've had three cups of coffee and two glasses of milk and you haven't said a word. Trouble with the Snyder girl again? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, if you want to spill it, I'll be glad to listen. Uh, uh, why don't you talk to your dad about it? Well, all the fellas know you're the only one to talk to when a guy's in trouble. Yeah, her dad still claims you're a Bolshevik, huh? Uh, worse than that, Ernie. I lost my job because I'm speaking at the rally tonight. Oh, oh, you're defending the rights of Sacco and Vanzetti. I have to. They're convicted murderers, you know. Uh, good oh, morning, uh, Ernie. Oh, good morning, good morning, Joe. Pardon some me, coffee, Sammy. Please, coffee, please. Coffee, sure, Joe. Here you are, coming up. Joe, uh, I understand you are opposing Sammy here in the debate tonight. Well, personally, I can't see what defense can be put up for men who advocate the overthrow of the government. Well, I'll know more about the reasons after I hear the speeches. But it seems to me he has a little defense coming. Now, I tell you, Joe, I was figuring that Sammy and you have been friends for a long time, huh? Yeah, we were best friends. Yeah, that's, that's right. Now, I figured if you just explained to your dad that you disagreed with Sammy politically... <laughs> Hello, Liz. I thought you'd forgotten all about me. Forgotten? Oh, my goodness, no. I think about you every day, Liz. <laughs> and I dream about you every night. Well, you're sounding very romantic. Well, we're almost there. <laughs> One more year and the house will be all mine. Mm-hmm. And the bank account you're so insistent on having? Yeah, it's coming along pretty well. I think by spring. It's been a long time, Ernie. I don't know why I wait for you. You're not handsome, and other men ask me for dates, well, not as many nor as often as they used now, to. Now, let me tell you something, Liz. You're more beautiful now than when I first came to Stanwalk. <laughs> Your eyesight isn't as good as it used to be, oh, Ernie. Oh, now, don't kid now. <laughs> Ernie, do you think it would be all right to advertise the amusement park for sale? No, no, I think you ought to wait until next spring. We never know what tomorrow we may bring, you know. <laughs> Yeah, now don't hurry me, Pete. One more minute and I'll have those hot dogs ready for you to take out. You gotta get them done... Re well, hello, Liz. Hello. My, how did you happen to be in on a weekday? Uh, come here. I came in to buy my wedding dress. It's in this box and, oh, Ernie, it's just beautiful. It is? Uh -huh. This is the week you were to make the last payment on the house, so I figured... Uh, uh, can, can, uh, can you take it back? Ernie... What is it now? Uh, excuse me. Uh, here you are, Pete. All wrapped up for you. Well, I'll see you later. Come again. <laughs> uh, Liz, there's been a little commotion down in New York, you know, yes. a sort of a crash, they call it, and on the stock exchange. Oh, and you the... didn't gamble with... Uh, that, that isn't like you, No, Ernie. no, no, I didn't gamble with our future. Well, what then? Well, you know old Mr. Cooper. Yes. Well, he would have lost all he owned if I hadn't helped him a little. So, you see, I'm afraid we have a new little mortgage. <laughs> Oh, I suppose it's just things like this that make me love you, Ernie. <laughs> but it might be more satisfactory in some ways to be in love with a first-class heel. And we're shipping scrap metal to Japan, Ernie. Scrap metal being used against helpless Chinese. It's not the Christian thing to do. Yeah, that scrap metal is being made into guns that will shoot at our boys in a few years. Don't you agree, Ernie? Uh, what do you think, Mr. Mayor? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I don't think Japan would dare try any funny business with the United States. Yeah, turn off that radio, Sammy, will you? I promised the mayor I'd listen to him rehearse his speech for the meeting tonight. The Stanwalk Sunday Forum is going to discuss American neutrality in Europe. Well, let's just hear what's on. Benny Goodman is supposed to be on. program with a news flash. Word has just been received that Japan has attacked Pearl Harbor. At 7.55 this morning, approximately 135 planes appeared over Hickman Field. In the first wave of the most savage attack... <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice greeting, Ernie. Oh. And I haven't seen you in almost a month. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Liz. I, uh, Beth, I was <laughs> up late. My my night at the USO, you mm -hmm. know. What were you doing there? Oh, they had me making hot dogs. Mm. 
Must have been a novelty. Now, I don't make as many ducks as I used to. I make cold sandwiches and haul them over to the all camp plant every noon. Mm, don't they have a lunch room in the plant? Oh, it isn't large enough to take care of a whole shift. You know, there are more men working there now than ever lived in Stanwick before the war. Mm. What are they making? Bomb fuses, and they're oh. doing a swell job, do. Mm -hmm. They're already received the Army E, and they're slated to get the Navy E next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I suppose tonight's your night for the blood bank. No, no, no. They won't take me again for another two weeks. No? Then we can go to the movies for a change. Well, uh, no. Oh. Who is it tonight? The Canals. I promised Ted. There's a social at the Elks for the benefit of the depot canteen, and he promised to take his wife. They have five kids, you know, and they can't afford a sitter. Ernie. And, yeah, well, I figured Mrs. Connell deserved a break. She never gets a chance to go out. She never gets a chance to go out. Stanwalksy's first wartime strike. Read all about it. Yeah, give me a paper, will you, son? Here you are, Ernie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, keep the change. How do you like this? Two weeks and the Al Camp officials won't give an inch. The strike would have been settled before it began if Cartwright and his crowd weren't more interested in profits than in the safety and welfare of their workers. Two weeks is a long time to go without a paycheck. Don't you fellas think you'd ought to try to compromise a little? You can't compromise with those guys, Murph. They made up their minds that no one instrumental in calling the strike will ever work in their plant again. And they also insist that those... Yeah, uh, when is the uh, next negotiation meeting scheduled? Yeah, they're not meeting again. Any, uh, any news from the union, Murph? Uh, they've been meeting in the auditorium all night, but they don't seem to be getting anywhere. How about the all-camp officials? Uh, they're all over in the bank building. The shades in the conference rooms are still down. They don't even know it's morning. Morning, Ernie. Morning. I just came over from the bank, and Mr. Cartwright said, would you please bring over plenty of black coffee? Come in. Just a minute, we can take up after we've had some coffee. Uh, we can go ahead, it's just Ernie. He feels just as we do. Well, first we have to find the ringleaders, the communists. They are responsible for this. Uh, they're a bunch of spies. Un American, that's what it is. You're right, Joe. They're a bunch of agitators. There isn't one in the whole crowd who cares whether America wins or loses this war. You're wrong, Mr. Cartwright. Ernie. I say you're wrong because I know most of the men you're talking about. They're not agitators or communists or Bolshevists or, well, any of the other things you've been calling them. They're hard-working Americans, and they're not working now because they think they have a grievance. I don't know whether it's justified or not, but you won't settle this mess sitting in back rooms calling each other's names. Un-American, you say? Oh, my, you know better than that, Mr. Cartwright. How about Art Smith with five sons overseas? How about Joe Stragini? How about Morris Cohn, who's given 12 times to the blood bank? I could go through a list of them and tell you what everyone has done for the war, but that isn't necessary. You know what they've done. Sure, but Ernie... We pray for the same things. And it's time we ask God to end this little fight over here so we can help end the big one over there. Oh, there you are. The Union boys up in the auditorium are looking for you. What's the matter, Ernie? You going over to the enemy? No, I'll be over to the meeting tonight, the Union meeting, as soon as I get these cups washed and some fresh coffee made. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go on ahead. None of the fellows on the executive board have had any sleep for two or three nights. Yeah, I guess there's enough coffee in here for the first load. I'll make some fresh when I get back. Brian! Ah, hi, Ernie. Well, let's not waste time speculating. We've got to make strategic plans. We've got to outguess them. It's like a war. Well, there ain't much difference anyway. Are they any different from the big shots who made fascism grow in Germany? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're a whole lot different. Do you want to call Cartwright a fascist? Have you forgotten what he's done for this town, Briggs? Well... Have you forgotten how he helped you out when you were sick? Yeah. And how you used to go out to his place on Sundays to help him get his lawn in shape? Uh, that kid of his who used to tag after you, you know where he is now? He's over in Japan fighting right now. Mm. Yeah, I know his plant is a big one, that it was just a little corner in a loft building in those days, but he hasn't changed as much as you think. Mm -hmm. He's still working for the same things you are, a decent America, a place in which we can live and pray in freedom. 
But we won't enjoy this freedom long, believe me, unless we do something about it. Backroom name-calling isn't doing anything about it. And it's time you fellas woke up to that fact. It'll be Sunday soon. And I don't know how any of you can go to church and pray for peace in the world unless you've already prayed at home for peace here in Stanwalk. Well, it's nice talking to you again, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, and it's nice having a chance to hash things out with you, Briggs. We ought to be ready to reopen in a few days. Right? Uh, yeah, just as soon as the arbitration committee is set up and makes its decisions. Shouldn't take long. I don't believe we're really so far apart. The, uh, union has selected me to be its member on the committee. Uh, are you to represent Al Camp, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. All we have to do now is to select the third member, the impartial referee. Uh, well, uh, I was thinking of uh, Mayor Kingsley, Mr. Cartwright. No, I don't think so. Well, he's been mayor of Stanwalk for over 20 years. Certainly, he ought to be acceptable. Well, he's already stated publicly that he supports the union's position. No, I wouldn't agree in a million years to Kingsley. Well, uh, how about Johnson? I was going to suggest Judge Crawford. Crawford? Well, you're not serious. Yes, in the first place, he owns stock in the company. And in the second place... All right, then. We'll both, both write a list of ten names. The first that appears on both lists shall be the third member of the committee. Start writing, Mr. Briggs. All right. Okay. Now we'll exchange lists. Hmm. Well, here it is. He's number two on my list and number three on yours. Ernie! Well, it's two in the morning, men. I propose that we continue to meet until everything's ironed out. If you stick with me, the plant can open up by the second shift tomorrow, maybe even the first shift. I'll stick, all right. Now I want to tell you about that safety rail that's needed in the casting department. Yeah, I know about it. Harrington, the foreman, has been griping about it for three years. The rail is needed, Mr. Cartwright. I order you to have it installed at once, but it's not to hold up the settlement. It can be done while work is going on. Talking about the casting department, Ernie. How about the men's refusal to do any other work while the firing is being sampled? You're entitled to a day's work for a day's pay, Mr. Cartwright. Briggs, the men in the casting department are to do other work while their sampling's being made. It's to be understood, however, that they are not to be used in departments other than... Oh, oh, gosh, who is it? Who is it? It's Beth. Oh, but, why, hello, dear. I, Oh, I'm still in my bathrobe. I, I guess I overslept. I was up very late, you know. <laughs> well, the strike is settled, Liz. I know it, you fool. It's on the front pages of all the papers. Why, there's a group that suggested a local holiday each year, and they want to call it Ernie's Day. Ernie's Day? Oh, how am I? Now, isn't, <laughs> isn't that the silliest thing you ever heard of? <laughs> I don't see anything silly about it at all. Oh, taking the day off? No, of course not. I've got work to do. Liz, I, I think the war will be over soon. I've only got two more payments to make on the house, oh, and... we've waited a long time, Ernie. Yeah, I know, I know. I've been awfully unfair, haven't <laughs> I? But from now on, I'm going to work hard to save that thousand dollars, believe me. <laughs> and maybe I'll even turn into that first-class heel you wanted once. <laughs> Why, there's a crowd around the stand, Ernie. Yeah, what can they want at this hour? It's too late for breakfast, too early for lunch. Well, look, the mayor, the head of the bank, and Cartwright and Briggs. Oh, my, my, my. I hope there isn't going to be any trouble, Liz. Yeah, you better wait here. Well, I'll stand right here by the corner of the auditorium. Now, now call me when you know what it's all about. Oh, yeah. Now. Well, good morning, good morning, gentlemen. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, we thought you would never be coming. We've been waiting for an hour and a half. Well, I'll have the coffee ready in a jiffy. I guess we all stay up a little overtime. <laughs> I'd better get things started. Uh, just a minute, Ernie. You're uh, not opening up. Huh? Not opening up? Why? What? Wh what's this all about? Well, we've decided. Uh, better that... let Mr. Cartwright explain. Okay. <laughs> Ernie, you did a wonderful thing yesterday in getting us to arbitrate and in acting as referee. We've decided we can't take a chance on trouble like this occurring again, so... Uh... So we want you to give up your hot dog stand and take the job of permanent arbiter of all disputes. Yeah, for the whole town and at a very substantial salary. <laughs> well, that's very flattering, gentlemen. 
But you won't really need me if you just remember to treat others the way you'd like to be treated yourself. I don't want to preach, but when you need guidance, you'll, you'll have to look to a greater power than the one you can find in a hot dog vendor. You see, I told you that he wouldn't want to yeah, take... Pardon me, I've got to get the fire lit under the urn. Thanks, gentlemen. You see, the steam, the steam from the coffee urn operates my whistle, too. People won't know I'm open. <laughs> Ernie, we were afraid you might turn down our offer, so we've done a few things already this morning. You may not like them, but they've already been done. The bank realized that you saved it and the whole town a great deal of money. The town depends on its industry. So this morning, we tore up the small mortgage the bank holds on that house of yours. No. Yes. And realizing that it would have cost us a great deal of money to bring an arbiter in from out of the city, the union and Al Camp have gone 50-50 on your fee. This morning, Ernie, we deposited a thousand dollars in your name. You... you have... Uh, Liz? Liz? Beth? <whistles> You know, I just got to thinking. If you had one wish and that wish would come true, what would you wish for? Now, be honest. Money? I wonder how many of you would wish for money. Well, why not? Money buys an awful lot of things. Money is what we all work for, isn't it? Or is it? You know something? If we worked half as hard for some of the other things in life as we do for money, well, maybe we'd be a lot better off. For instance, suppose we all worked very hard at keeping our families together and happy. Suppose we worked extra hard at being good husbands, wives, fathers or mothers. Do you think our divorce courts would be as jammed as they are right now? Do you think juvenile delinquency would still be a national problem? You know, you can't expect your marriage to be a success, your family to be happy, unless you do work hard for it. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Being happily, successfully married is a difficult full-time job, a job that requires intelligence and patience. <laughs> Sometimes keeping a family together is too much for the best of us. But whenever the going gets tough, remember you can get help for the asking. Surefire help, wonderful help, God's help. And you ask for it by saying a prayer. Yes, pray. Thank God for what you have and ask him for what you need. And pray together with your family. A family that prays together stays together. So pray together with your family tonight and every night. Do that and your heart will be lighter. Your head will be higher. Good night. God bless you. Before saying good night, we wish to thank all of you who helped make this program possible. A special word of praise is due Bud Lesser for writing tonight's radio play. Thanks also to Mel Williamson for directing the program. The actors who were heard tonight with Charlie Ruggles were Ann Morrison, David McMahon, Hy Averback, Dick Ryan, Herbert Vigran, Joe Forte, and Henry Barron. Next week, our stars on the Family Theater will be Chester Morris with Jack Haley as your host. <laughs> This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.